would add is that um, have a communications plan um, ahead of time so that you can communicate with people. One of the things you don't want is for people to start going into areas or buildings looking for you um, and you're not there because you're putting other people at risk. So being able to um, have cell phone numbers of individuals and your cell phone may not work depending on the hazard um, in terms of calling but you may be able to use the um, feature to do text messaging and that's very important that you be able to send text messages to individuals. When I've been in um, situations where alarms have gone off in buildings and my team whom I prepared four or six people to help me evacuate from a building, that's one of the methods that we've used. And my um, team knows where to find me most of the time and where I may be. But when I'm not there, they need to communicate with each other and try to communicate with me so that no one's putting themselves at risk, but we're able to communicate with each other as best possible to get out. So when I was in Washington, D.C., and we had an earthquake, um, my assistant was out of the building. And somehow she was able to find her way back into the building, and I was on the eighth floor. But my team communicated with each other and were able to assist me out of the building. And another time when there was actual fire in the parking garage and the alarm went off, um, I was outside. I wasn't in my office, but some of my team were there. So they went and looked to see where I would be, um, and then they communicated with each other, sent two people downstairs to see if maybe I had not perhaps come into the building at that point, and sure enough, they found me outside and we were able to communicate with each other via cell phone and text and everyone was able to get out of the building safely.